Davis in the Southwest. Bears coming out on the field, getting set to host the Texas A&M Aggies. The 103rd renewal of the Battle of the Brazos. It's Baylor, Texas A&M Big 12 football, matching two teams tied for second place in the Big 12 South standings. Let's now go down to the field, the toss of the coin, and listen in, conducted by Randy Crystal. Randy Crystal, his best uh, Marcel Marceau imitation, has indicated that Baylor lost the toss. Is that right? That no, won, won oh, the toss. Baylor deferred. won the toss and deferred to the second half. So only the second time all season, Baylor has won the opening coin toss. Ryan Havens will kick off for the Bears, kicking deep to Terry Franks and Pierre Brown. And we're about set to get this battle of the Brazos underway in front of a near sellout crowd at Floyd Casey Stadium. Fans very evident. You can tell the Baylor fans with the goal. The visitors from College Station by the maroon. Kick is away from left to right. On a bounce, it will bounce through and out of the end zone. And on the touchback, the Aggies will begin at their own 20. Keys to the game brought to you by Bruner Motors. Go to BrunerMotors.com and check out the Baylor special. From the 20, first play, handoff, Javorski Lane, 274 pounds right up the middle. Bears hit him hard. Get him on the ground after a short game. Nick Moore leads a gang tackling Baylor defense. Look at that, a gain of about a half a yard just across the 20 on that first down carry. And one change in the starting lineup from what we gave you. Vincent Rhodes is in that defensive line. The sophomore from Denison, 6'2", 312 pounder starting at defensive tackle. Second down, a long nine for the Aggies. Ball just across their own 20 yard line. Field completely in the shadows here as we start just past the 6 o'clock hour. Play action. McGee to throw. Right side incomplete. Well overthrown. Think he tried to hit Chad Schrader. It looked like he threw an out route. Schrader may have cut in and wasn't near where that ball landed. James tied in as a Dexter defensive back for the Bears. Aggies in three receivers right wide side of the field. Aggies with two to the left side. Third down, a long nine for A&M. Ball just past their own 20-yard line. McGee in the shotgun, has the snap, looks, pumps, tucks it. He's going to try to run. He's chased. Joe Pa can't get him, but C.J. Wilson does. C.J. chased him, got him on the ground, and it's uh, Brandon Stiggers who made the tackle for the Bears. Stiggers on the tackle at the 23-yard line. It is fourth down, a punting situation for a &M. Big play by the Baylor defense. Brandon Stiggers, if he doesn't tackle him, Stephen McGee, who's a good runner, picks up that first down. But Baylor did a good job. Bill Bradley called what it, he called a fake blitz. He made it look like Baylor was going to come after Stephen McGee. But at the last minute, the linebackers dropped out. That was a good call. Justin Brantley, a sophomore from Sealy, is the punter. It's a good snap. Gets it away. Carl Sims will gather it in at the 21-yard line. He's to the 25, runs into his own man, and is down at the 28-yard line. Give you the Dr. Pepper starting lineups after this play. Bears begin at their own 29-yard line, first and 10. 13.03 to go, first quarter. First possession of the night for the Bears. Trey Payne in motion from left to right. Three to the right side, one to the left side. Pass is deflected out of the air. It was knocked out of the air by a Melvin Bullet, the strong safety coming on a blitz. Brings up second down 10 for the Bears from their own 29-yard line. Traveling left to right in this first quarter. Snap back to Bell. Side steps to the left side. Pass left flat is incomplete. Knocked away. Intended over there. Danny Gore knocked it out of bounds. Leaves the Bears third down and 10 from the 29. Ziegler in motion right to left. Here's the third down 10 play. Pressure of Bell. Passes left side. This is caught by Ziegler, but short of the marker and have wrestled out of bounds about the 37-yard line. Going to leave the Bears about two yards short. It'll be fourth down and, uh, well, one yard short. Fourth down and a yard. Ricky Thompson, uh, punting situation coming up for the Bears. Well, it is. I tell you, the a &M defensive front is getting a lot of push off the ball. If they can do this with four guys, put that kind of pressure on Sean, force him to deliver the ball quickly, we're going to have to make some adjustments. We're doing a little bit of motion now. They're going to have to be more of that to get these guys off balance and not let them tee off. Fourth down one brings up a punting situation for the Bears. Daniel Sepulveda leads the nation in punting this week. 46.2 yard average. Left-footed punter gets a nice one away. Chad Schrader will take it at the 15. Gets by Quito Teasley. Gets a good block. Check and see if it's a legal block to the 20, to the 30, to the 40, to the 43 yard line. 
Chad Schrader, a nice return before Nick Moore finally covered him. It was a good legal block back downfield, and the Aggies will have it at their own 44-yard line. Here it's 0-0, 12-24 to go, first quarter. Aggies have the ball after a 29-yard punt return by Chad Schrader, beginning at their own 44. Fake the handoff, Stephen McGee still got it, running free in the center of the field to the 40, to the Baylor 34-yard line. A fantastic fake to the receiver around. Schrader held on to the ball, or I'm sorry, McGee held on to the ball, ran it for 22 yards to the Baylor 34. And that's what Andy would do. Stephen McGee is a very good runner, deceptive speed, big, strong guy. And what he did on that is just add a little zone read play. He read the defensive end on the right side of the wide side of the field and said, okay, if you're going to step down and go after and chase the running back, I'm going to go out around you. He made a guy miss and picked up a large gain on first down. 12-minute mark of the first quarter. Aggies have it at the Baylor 34. Two backs in the backfield. Two receivers right, one left. McGee will give it to Courtney Lewis. Lewis uh, pinballed around a little bit and finally tackled at the 33-yard line. Jason Lamb in at a defensive end spot for the Bears on the left side. Four-man defensive front digs in. Second down, nine for the Aggies from the Baylor, 33. Twin receivers to both sides. McGee looks left, looks right. Flushed, rolls back, now passes, caught at the 30-yard line. Passes caught out there, and tackle made at the 30. Catch was made by Howard Morrow, the uh, sophomore out of Keller Fossil Ridge High School. A short uh, four-yard gain. It's going to be third down. Uh, it's going to be third down and about six coming up. A three-yard gain, so third down and six from the 30 for the Aggies. Bill Bradley's doing a good job. You can tell what he's done is he's put in a mixture package where you just really look at faking the blitz early, backing out of it, and, and Stephen McGee is not sure what's going to happen. So he checked down on that play, and they tackled him, limited him to three yards. Waving those growl towels in the stands are the Baylor fans on third down and six for A&M from the Bears' 30-yard line. Bears trying to come on the blitz. McGee, option to the right side. That's Goodson, the freshman, up the right sideline and finally bumped out of bounds right at the first down marker. Boy, it'll depend on the spot, but looks very close. In fact, from here, it looks like it is a first down at the 24. Yeah, just a well, I think play. it's short. That's, it's really close, John. I mean, it looks like he marks him about half a foot short, depending on which sticks is official sticks, and I think that's the official sticks on the, uh, I think that's the west side, east side. Going to bring the chains uh, shortest distance ever for measurement. Bring them in about uh, two feet to measure on the far sideline. He just got it. Oh, look at that. It by is a nose. first down. Just by the nose, John. But that was just a simple option play. It wasn't a read option. He just was up under the center, did a spin just to hold the line back for a second, and went to the right, did a good job of pitching it late, uh, and they picked up that first down. So that was a big third down, and convert, third down conversion for the AM offense. And, uh, Baylor, you have to tee it up and, and try to limit him here. And J.J., that carry first of the night by Mike Goodson, a 6-foot, 192-pound true freshman out of Klein Collins High School, averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Very impressive. Got just enough for the first down. Aggies have it first and 10 at the Baylor 24. Straight eye behind McGee. He'll give it to the tailback. Coming to the left side, it's Goodson again. He's chased, and he's tackled for a loss. Chased down by Maurice Linguist. Did a good job of staying with him and making the tackle for a two-yard loss. And Baylor's doing a really good job of, of pressuring the line of scrimmage. What that means is they may, they're not getting a ton of penalties. They're getting some, but they're pressuring the line, not allowing those gaps that were there last week. If you remember last week, they had a lot of cutback lanes, front side lanes, up the middle lanes, to the side lanes. Every lane was wide open, so you can tell Bill Bradley was on them all week about that. Those lanes were the fast lane for the Jayhawks last week. Second down and 12 for the Aggies now from the 26-yard line. Helicopter flying over very close, getting some pictures of this sold-out Floyd Casey Stadium. Here's the second down, 12 play. McGee trying to set up the screen. Passes down the left sideline. It is caught on the left sideline at the 9-yard line. Catch was made by Big Martellus Bennett. Had his legs cut out from under him by Alton Weidman, but Bennett held on to that ball for a first down. They'll spot it at the 7-yard line. So the Aggies have first and goal at the 7. Ricky Thompson, a 19-yard pass to Martellus Bennett. Well, it was. That was a huge play. Actually, Weidman should have gone up and tried to get the ball. He went down to the legs of the receiver, let him have a free shot at the football. Probably better in that case to go up high and try to break it up. Instead, a 19-yard gain gives the Aggies first and goal at the 7 for the Bears. 
Option to the right side. McGee has it. He still has it. He will pick up a yard to the six-yard line. Bears really strung it out nicely down the line. Jason Lamb was in on that tackle. Dwayne Crawford was in on the tackle, as, as was C.J. Wilson. So one-yard gain, second and goal from the six, coming up for a and m well, A&M's diversified offense. I mean, they run some of everything. The zone read, they run the option, they'll split out with four wides, but that's just a simple option play, and Baylor limited them there to about two yards. Now you have second and goal from the six, so you want to limit them here to two yards at the most, if you can, uh, to make them have to make a big decision on third and four or more. Now it's second and goal from the six for the Aggies. Tight end on the right side, comes in motion to the left, straight eye behind McGee, play action, hit as he throws, pass is caught, and then bumped out of bounds at the three-yard line. Catch was made down there by Chris Alexander, the junior fullback out of Humble. So the Aggies have it third and goal from the three-yard line. Well, that's a good play. That was a good pass by Stephen McGee's little play action pass. He took it back, faked it to the tailback. Uh, which is a good fake, and he flew it out to the fullback to the right flat, but Baylor did a good job limiting him there to about two and a half to three yards. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, the hits on Stephen McGee will begin to take their toll, because he's taking a lot of hits, running the option, and also by the pressure Baylor's putting on him. Yeah, somebody hit him pretty good there. I didn't catch who it was. It is third down and goal from the three for A&M. Aggies 85% in the red zone this season, fifth best in the Big 12. McGee alone in the backfield, low snap, passes right side, it is caught for a touchdown by Martellus Bennett. Just inside the goal line on the right side, three-yard touchdown pass, Stephen to McGee to Martellus Bennett. And normally with Big Javorski Lane uh, at your disposal, you'd think they might pound it on the ground, but they go to the air and get the short three-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, Adam did a good job disguising that. It came into a tight formation with two tights, and then they split out the tight ends and came out like a four wide formation and all Matillus Bennett did is went the in, his inside receiver went about four yards turned around and the ball was laid right on him so that's a good play call Lane Newman on for the extra point for the Aggies he's a left footed kicker snap back is down the kick is up and good but oh hang on hang on no good no good on the extra point kick boy it looked very routine but the extra point kick was no good Ricky Thompson, can we check with you? How did he miss that one? Well, I can't tell if somebody got it at the line of scrimmage or if he just hit it badly, but it was clearly wide to the left when it went up, and I just couldn't tell if anybody got a hand on it or not. Yeah, exactly. So the extra point kick is no good by the Aggies. They drive the ball 56 yards on nine plays, 4.15 off the clock to get the touchdown with 8.13 to go in the first quarter. It's A&M 6, Baylor nothing on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. 25 years in America, 25 years of creating a buzz, of turning drivers into fanatics. So celebrate Mitsubishi's 25 years at Don Herring Mitsubishi. Get an incredible deal on every Mitsubishi with discounts and rebates up to $10,000. Zero percent financing or drive a new Eclipse for just $239 a month. Don Herring Mitsubishi, Dallas, Irving, Plano, and DonHerring.com. Avacor announces, we're putting our money where your hair isn't. Call now and ask about our free month supply. That's right, free. We're doing it because Avacor's formula is FDA approved to regrow hair in as little as two months. And that means more before and Avacor. Avacor has um, certainly improved my confidence. My love life is improving as well. Before and Avacor. I tried it for a couple months and boom. I was, I was blown away. Before and Avacor. Well, most of the time I was wearing hats because I didn't want anybody to know the difference, and most people wouldn't say anything. But now with Avacor, no hats. And for a limited time, just for trying Avacor, you'll receive a free Avacor boost to instantly thicken your hair. We're putting our money where your hair isn't. Call now and ask about our free month supply. And for a limited time, get a free Avacor boost. Call 1-800-340-2180. 1-800-340-2180. Baylor Big 12 football from Waco, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Shining is having someone you can depend on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas shining through. By Dodge, grab life by the horns, visit your Texas Dodge dealer. By Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. By Friends of Baylor, join Friends of Baylor at friendsofbaylor.com. And by Reliant Energy, 
to save money on your electricity. To learn more about how you can save, call Reliant Energy at 1-866-RELIANT or visit Reliant.com. Kickoff by A&M following their touchdown scoring drive is away. Deep kick will drive Mikhail Baker nine yards deep, bobbles it, covers it, takes a knee, and the Bears will begin from their own 20-yard line. Well, pretty good, uh, Im impressive scoring drive by A&M, J.J. They were helped by that nice kickoff return. Only had to drive it 56 yards for the score. Yeah, that big punt return, John, made the difference because Daniel, boom, the big punt, uh, I think it's about 56 yards, if I'm not 48 yards, nice hang time. The punt returner did a good job. I think that was Chad Schrader making a couple guys miss. And they got the ball on our side, the plus side of the 50. So they really didn't have to do much to make that score. Anytime you get the ball on the plus side of the 50, uh, typically you're going to score one out of every two chances if you're a pretty efficient offense like a &M. John Bell, the Big 12's Offensive Player of the Week this last week, takes his offensive teammates onto the field. Fenty in motion. Bell takes the snap, going to hand it off to Brandon Whitaker, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Gain of only a yard off right tackle by Brandon Whitaker. Matt Featherston and Melvin Bullock combine on the tackle for A&M. Yeah, a little zone, not even zone read, just a little hand play. We're going to try to slow the game down and run it a little bit. But I'll tell you, A&M has some big guys in the middle. they got big red Bryant at 6'5", 329. So it's tough to go north and south on these guys. But you do have to try to run the ball because they're committing a lot of people to the pass. Three down linemen this play defensively for the Aggies. Second down nine for the Bears from their own 21. Bell has good protection. A lot of time. Rainbow center of the field. Ziegler has it at the 40. Wanting free at the 20. 10. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown. Sean Bell to Dominique Ziegler. 79 yards for the Baylor strike. And John, that's exactly what Dominique did a couple years ago. But Dominique, Sean did a good job. And they only rushed three people on that play. That's why it's so surprising they gave that up. Ricky, they only rushed three people and dropped eight, but they let Dominique Ziegler, who's on the outside on this side, get up the seam between the safeties. And a and has been known to give up a big play on, in the defensive secondary. Well, what they did, Akers was on the inside. He ran a corner, and he took the safety out, J.J. The outside cornerback, the right cornerback, thought he had help in the middle, but there was nobody there, so he let him go. Here's the extra point attempt. This is big. The Aggies miss theirs. Ryan Havens doesn't miss his. A 79-yard rainbow from John Bell to Dominique Ziegler. And there's gold at the end of that rainbow. The form of a Baylor touchdown. 6.55 to go in the first quarter. It's now Baylor 7. Texas A&M 6. 7-6 seven, six Bears. 6.55 to go first quarter. If this crowd wasn't jazzed before the game, they are now. Ryan Havens is jazzed. He kicks this one nine yards deep, and it bounces out of the end zone. And the Aggies will begin at their own 20-yard line, trailing 7-6 with 6.50 to go in the first quarter. Here's the Aggies with the ball. Stephen McGee play action. He's throwing deep over the middle, and he overshot Chad Schrader. Schrader had a step on Anthony Arline, but the pass was too long, and it's incomplete, and it's second down 10 for A&M. Second down 10 for the Aggies from their own 20. One back in the backfield, option to the left side. McGee wants to keep it. He cuts up field. He gets to the 25-yard line. He is knocked down hard by Baylor's Joe Pavelic. Also, Antonio Jones on that tackle for the Bears. He did pick up five. Will leave the Aggies third and five from their own 25-yard line. Another option play to get that down to third and five. But if you're Baylor, this is where you want AM and and third and four or more. Because AM wants to be at third and four or less. So uh, this is typically uh, a running down for them, but they'll probably have to pass because Baylor's done such a good job, job against the run. Third down five for the Aggies. Traveling right to left in this first quarter. Ball spotted on the left hash. Tight end to the right side. Man in a slot on the left. Now goes in motion to the right side. McGee wants to throw. Flares it out right side. It is incomplete. Whoa, C.J. Wilson was breaking on that ball. Intended for Joey Thomas. Had the pass not been too high, C.J. I think would have picked it and taken it to the end zone. Aggies punting situation. Fourth down and five from the 25. Carl Sims waits at the Baylor 26. Kick is away by Brantley. A 47-yard average on the year for Brantley. Another good one. Drives Carl back to the 18. Counter punches to the 25, to the 30. On his feet at the 35, to the 40, to the 42-yard line for Carl Sims. 
Did the ball, uh, the ball pop out at the end of that play. A&M thought they had it, but Baylor was down. A 57-yard punt, 24-yard return by Carl Sims. Bears ball, snap back, and the shotgun is high. Hand off to Paul Mosley, and he is tackled for a loss. Big Henry Smith got to him. Smith with the tackle, the junior, out of Aliceville, Alabama, for a loss of about four yards back to the 37. It's a five-yard loss, so second down 15 for the Bears from the 37. Double tight end set. And the ball to Mosley, trying to get to the corner on the left side. He's to the 40, and tackled at the 42-yard line. Danny Gore came up from his uh, cornerback position, made the tackle on the far sideline of Paul Mosley. He picked up six, will lead the Bears third down and nine. And the Bears are at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers right, one left, third down nine for the Bears from their own 43-yard line. Bell screens it out right side to Mosley. In the open field to the 45, and he's tackled there. Third down nine, Bears pick up only about three yards, and it's fourth down in apparent punting situation coming up for Bears. I can tell you, I mean, A&M did a smart thing. They've learned their lesson. I mean, they're, they're rushing as few people as they can and dropping as many as they can. That's why I was so surprised that Dominique got behind them on that play. Uh, Missy Tupe, I think is how you say it, the linebacker made a, made a good play. He's a small, stubby guy. Very athletic at 5'10", 250. Made a good tackle to limit Paul Mosley to a gain of about two and a half yards. Tupe from St. George, Utah, is 24 years old. Came to a &M after a Mormon mission. Here's the kick by Sepal, but a fair catch taken by Chad Schrader at the 12-13 uh, yard line, and that's where the Aggies' offense will take over with 3.25 remaining in the first quarter. Here we go, first and ten for A&M from their 13-yard line. Snap back to McGee, option to the left side, cuts up field to the 20, and knocked off his pins at the 24-yard line. Boy, again, a good open field tackle there. I think uh, either Antonio Jones or Anthony Arline made that tackle in the open field because McGee had a lot of green territory in front of him. Well, McGee, once again, just a little zone read play, but they ran an option off of it because they had a two-back set. He faked it to one guy, read the play, and then brought it back to the to the to the near side of the field with the running back that he had an option to pitch to. That's a nice call. It was a nice game on first down. It was an 11-yard game, so first and 10, A&M from there, 24. 2.38 to go, first quarter. Baylor 7, Texas A&M 6, our score. McGee with an empty backfield, flares it out left side. This one is incomplete. Tried to hit Morrow out in the left flat and threw it in front of him. So it'll be second down 10 coming up for the Aggies from their own 24. Second down 10 for A&M from their 24-yard line. Trailing Baylor 7-6. First quarter from Waco. McGee, Stein will hand it to Goodson to the right side. Gets a block, has a hole out to the 35-36-yard line. Wow, an 11-yard gain on that carry by Mike Goodson, the true freshman from Klein Collins High School. And that's a first down for the Aggies. Move the chains. They've got it out to their own 35. Well, Mike Goodson, a freshman, you, didn't think, you wouldn't have thought he would have got much playing time, but uh, Courtney Lewis went down with an injury, missed three games. Mike Goodson came in backing up big Javorski Lane, and he's 6 foot 192 averaging, like you said earlier, John, 5.7 yards a carry, and he didn't hurt it with that game. 11 on that play. First and 10 A&M from the 35. McGee alone in the backfield. He'll take the snap in the shotgun. Quick pass right side. Caught. Flag down. Joey Thomas, the tight end, caught it. And then was tackled by... Tackled out just shy of the 45-yard line. But let's check the flag thrown on the uh, far sideline. Looks like John, the preliminary indication is offsides. Uh, let's see what uh, he has to say. The preliminary indication looks like it's offsides on Baylor. Offside, defense, the penalty is declined. Second down. Yep, they'll obviously decline that one because on the pass play, McGee to Thomas, uh, nine yard gain, so second and one coming up for AM. Ball spotted just shy of their own 45 yard line. Now one minute, 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. McGee drops back in the shotgun. Twin receivers to both sides. One back in the backfield is Lane. He stays in the block. McGee has a lot of time. Now flush, still run. He's hit hard and down at the 45. 
Knocked around pretty good. Antonio Jones and Pavelic combine on the tackle. Maurice Langwist in there as well. Again, that must have been good coverage downfield because McGee had a lot of time. Finally decided to tuck it, run with it, but got nowhere. It's third and one. Well, you can tell. I mean, that was good coverage by Baylor because Baylor was bringing a blitz from the outside uh, by Maurice Lindquist and with his man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, he still couldn't find anyone. So that was good coverage by Baylor to also cover up, to, to be able to cover up his receivers when he's coming on the blitz. Tight set for A&M offensively on this third down and one. Straight eye behind McGee. Javorski Lane gets the carry. He is across the 45. Looks like he's got the first down before he was knocked backwards. Baylor seven, Texas A&M six. New set of downs for the Aggies. McGee has it. Going to get the Goodson this time. Oh, he kept it. McGee to the right side. He's into Baylor territory to the 40-yard line. That was a nifty fake by Stephen McGee. Goodson faked it running off to the left side. McGee kept it to the right side. And another big gainer, about 13 yards and a first down for the Aggies. Well, what you can see is Texas A&M has found a few things that can work. They run in combination plays, basically plays that look like another play, and they just do derivations or deviations, derivations off that. So he's basically a two receiver, two, two back set. He fakes it on a little zone read play, and he just keeps it. Other times he gives it. Then other times he fakes the same look and runs an option off of it. And I don't care who you are, John, it doesn't matter if he's running to the right, to the left. It's hard to guard all those different plays off the same look. Give you that Javorski Lane uh, stat. When we come back, we've reached the end of the first quarter in front of a packed house at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. 15 minutes in the books. Our score, Baylor 7, Texas A&M 6 on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. It's good old-fashioned hard work. <laughs> it's pushing to the limit. No pain. No game. T-Mac and Lucy are getting ready for the season, and it's here. Opening night is Saturday, November 4th, against the Western Conference champion Dallas Mavericks. T-Mac, this is how we do it old school. So get your tickets now by calling 713-627-DUNK or by visiting Rockets.com. One, two. Suddenlink High Definition TV. TV doesn't look like just TV anymore. To order Suddenlink High Definition TV, call 1-800-915-1844. The future of television, available today. Suddenlink, life connected. There it is. There what is? The Harley I almost bought. <laughs> I uh, love that color. Is that a... Uh, black? Black. It's black. That almost looks great. Well, I can almost hear that big V-twin. Mm -hmm. Almost won't get you there. Experience our name. Independence Harley-Davidson Buell. College Station, Texas. You're watching FSN Southwest. Baylor 7, Texas A&M 6 as we move to the second quarter. Our Baylor football legend at this game just recognized on the field. Uh, Ricky, one of your former teammates, Ronnie Lee. Well, it is. It's Bo Lee. Bo, I remember chasing you down the field on an 80-yard touchdown against these guys in College Station in 1975. Yeah, I can still remember that like it was yesterday. I I figured they would put that up and make it look good, you know, but uh, I'm just happy to be here, man. I mean, this is quite an honor, and my, uh, my family's here, and uh, I'm glad my son is... Uh, Oh, you know, young enough to, uh, old enough to just be here and to see this. Well, I'm glad you're here. Played with you here at Baylor and ended up having to play it against you in the NFL. But I'm sure glad we weren't on the field at the same time. Yeah, I, man, I know you. You got the hands and the quickness. And I always, when I watch Steve Largent, I'm like, I always remember you. When I, when I left Miami and I went to uh, Seattle, I would see Steve Largent. And I'm like, I know a guy run the same pattern, same hands, was the best. And I always saw you run your paddles, man, and I always wanted to be like you. You know, a tight end trying to be like you. You had the best feet in the world. Well, the you had one advantage over me, about six inches and 100 pounds, I think. <laughs> yeah, I had to get in there and do the dirty work, but uh, tell you what, man, it was nice seeing you run your paddles. Yeah, I really, it was. Well, I appreciate that, Bo. Welcome to Waco. Let's bring these bears through tonight. Hey, nice to be here. 
Thanks, Rick, with Ronnie Bowley, Baylor football legend for our game tonight. First and 10 A&M from the Baylor 40-yard line. McGee calling his own number again. This time, good pursuit by Baylor. Tripped up and uh, tackled after a short gain of a yard by Clayton Scholes. Scholes on the tackle for the Bears. It'll be second down and nine for A&M from the 39. It is indeed second nine from the Baylor 39 for Texas A&M. Trailing Baylor 7-6 early second quarter. Play action. McGee throws it right sideline. Jump ball out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds. Intended for Joey Thomas on the right sideline. Brandon Stiggers, the rover for the Bears on pass defense. Three receivers left. Two to the right side. Empty backfield for McGee. Wants to throw. Has a lot of time. Pass over the middle. There is Bennett. He's got the catch. He breaks out of a tackle. He's all the way to the 20-yard line. My goodness. Big Martellus Bennett. Baylor had him wrapped up, but he broke free and got all the way to the 20-yard line. A 19-yard pass, catch, and run. Stephen McGee to Martellus Bennett. Martellus Bennett, we were just talking about him, a big tight end, dual sport athlete. He had 24 catches coming into the day, which was second, only behind Chad Schrader. So uh, they use him quite a bit, uh, and he'll work that middle of the field for you. So a new set of downs for the Aggies. They've reached the Baylor 20, first and 10 A&M. Traveling left to right now in this second quarter. McGee will show the ball and hand it to Courtney Lewis. Starts left, comes back right. He's at the 15. Bears surround him and tackle him at the 13-yard line. Good change of direction there by Courtney Lewis. Senior out of Houston Madison High School. And uh, on the spot right at about the 13-yard line. So a gain of seven on that play will leave the Aggies second and three. Told you about Javorski Lane. Him and, uh, is the stat in short yardage that's so impressive. And he converted earlier on third and one. Tw now 21 of 24 times he's carried the ball on third or fourth down. He's gotten either a touchdown or a first down. That's pretty efficient. 21 out of 24 times he's been able to convert. Second down and three. Fake to Lane. And, uh, McGee kept it. McGee is inside the five and all the way to the two-yard line. Stephen McGee is just slicing up the Bears, keeping that ball from the quarterback position for A&M. And this is a hard offense to, to I'm telling you, to, to break down because they're running an option. He's just not running it from up under the center. And when you have a quarterback that's making a decision based on something one of the defensive players is doing, uh, he basically takes out of the game if he reads him right. And Stephen McGee is doing a good job of putting the ball in the belly of that tailback, fullback, holding it and reading the defensive end and making a decision at that point. And he picked up a nice game on first down. Nick Moore made that tackle on the last play, but it's first and goal for A&M. Call Lane's number, left side, dives, he's in. Touchdown, Javorski Lane. Touchdown to A&M. And they have regained the lead over the Bears with 12.32 to go in the second quarter. So the offside penalty declined. Uh, it would have been on Baylor. They'll take the touchdown, and it's 12-7 A&M. Let's we'll see if they go for two here to try to get back up, get back up by seven. It looks like they will. And John, typically this early in the game, you, you want to make sure that uh, you don't start chasing points. It looks like A&M is going to go for this, go for two. Uh, but this early in the game, you'd expect them to kick. It. Thanks, guy. Aggies now line up to go for two. Uh, up on Baylor, 12 to 7. Straight eye backfield behind Stephen McGee. Snap of the ball. Fake the handoff to Lane. McGee to throw. Back right corner of the end zone. It's caught for the two point conversion. McGee finds Joey Thomas. And it's now 14 to 7. AM up on Baylor. All right, Bradford, a lot of time to play out there in the South Plains, but a big early lead by the Red Raiders. The team Baylor will see next Saturday. We'll be in Lubbock. It is an 11 a.m. kickoff for the Bears and the Red Raiders next Saturday. Game to be broadcast on FSN, and uh, our friend John Heitke from FSN Southwest in attendance tonight for this Baylor A&M game. We welcome him to Floyd Casey Stadium. Aggies have just driven the ball 87 yards with 13 plays, 5.53 off the clock. For the score that has uh, A&M time of possession here in the first half, 13 minutes, 30 seconds for the Aggies, 3 minutes, 58 seconds for the Bears. Here is the A&M kickoff, end-over-end kick. 
Mikhail Baker takes it at the 7. Chance to return at the 15. 20 gets a block. To the 30, to the 40-yard line, to the 50. He's angling to the right side. A flag is down back on the field. He is caught and tackled at the 20-yard line. Well, check the flag, but a fantastic return of 73 yards by Mikhail Baker. Let's hold on and check that flag. That was thrown pretty early on, John, too, which usually tells you it's either a... Back in the back, during the return, ah. number 17. Pass the first down. Well, that was a costly one, too, but it was right around where... A where the cut was made by Mikel Baker. Uh, the flag came out really early on, so uh, an unfortunate uh, mistake, and that'll show up in the stats. It's only probably like a probably a eight-yard, nine-yard penalty because it's half the distance to the goal, but in essence, it's almost an 80-yard penalty yeah. for the Baylor Bears. Well, that is too bad, and you can see Mikael Baker frustrated as he came to the sideline. Instead of a 73-yard return, the penalty negates that. The Bears will begin at their own nine-yard line, starting inside their own 10. 12-16 to go, second quarter. A&M on top, 14-7 over the Bears. Bears huddle on the sideline, go right to the line of scrimmage. Jordan Adams is in at a tight end on the right side. One back in the backfield is Paul Mosley. Sean Bell behind center, Will Blaylock. He will give the ball to Mosley. Starts right, comes left, gets out to the 15-yard line. Tough running by Paul Mosley. Gets six yards on first down. It's a good cut by Paul Mosley. That was just a stretch play to the right or to the wide side of the field. Uh, but he made a cutback because AM over-pursued. He just cut back to his left, made a couple guys miss, and picked up five yards, six yards. Leaves the Bears second down and four from their 15. Now trailing the Aggies, 14 to 7. Well, that time of possession, very dramatic. We gave you those numbers in AM's favor, but that is something they have done all year. If the Bears can mount a drive of their own on second down four, fake the handoff this time to Mosley. Bell throwing deep over the middle, looking for Ziegler, and Ziegler's got it at the 40-yard line. Pulled down in the secondary by Jordan uh, Peterson. But another big gainer on the pass from Sean Bell to Dominique Ziegler. A 49-yard gain to the Texas A&M 36. And, Ricky, one of my keys was fly the friendly skies. You have to go after A&M secondary because that's where they've had issues. Well, it is, and Ziegler did a great job of blocking the defender with his body. He went up with it. The defender had to go through him. It was actually pretty good coverage. Sean made a great throw right on the money, and Ziegler did a great job shielding the defender and making the catch. Guys, that really flipped the, flipped the field position. The Bears were in tough spot inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, good point, Rick. Now they've got it at the A&M 36. First and 10 Bears. 49-yard pass from Sean Bell to Dominique Ziegler. Two receivers right, one to the left side. Thomas White comes in motion, takes the handoff. Short side of the field, not much room to work with, and pushed out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Thomas White, a trap man at Plano West, showed that speed, but... Didn't have much room to work with running to the short side. Second down six, and off to Mosley. Boy, he is hammered right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Harrington, a 6'5", 267-pound junior, defensive end out of Houston, St. Pius. Made a big play there, leaves the Bears third down and six from the 32. Bell from the shotgun, pressure, passing for Ziegler. He jumps, he makes the catch at the three-yard line. What a grab. Dominique Ziegler on the receiving end. This one of 29 yards. And I tell you what, Sean Bell and Dominique Ziegler are clicking tonight. And, uh, Ricky, I, I don't know what their plan is, but sooner or later they will quit playing him man-to-man -man coverage or only leaving one guy back there in that zone, third, say if that was a three-deep zone, against Dominique because he's making plays. Well, that's right. I'm really surprised they don't roll somebody up on him. But that's the advantage of this offense, J.J. You've got three, four wides in there. It's tough to double anybody, particularly one of the outside guys. Catch by Ziegler gives the Bears first and goal at the three-yard line. Double tight end set. One back in the backfield is Brandon Whitaker. John Bell may be changing the play. Now steps behind center Will Blaylock. Got to hand the ball to uh, Whitaker. He strives forward. He stretches. He's across the goal line. Touchdown, Brandon Whitaker. Touchdown, Bears, as they are an extra point away from tying this game. 
And that was a good play, but what I would do if I was Baylor, just go and kick the ball really quickly. It looks like that's exactly what they're doing because Brandon Whitaker lost the ball, but I believe he's across the line. Bears lining up to kick as quick as they can. A&M came out of there saying they had stripped him of the ball. Now the Bears are lined up for the extra point. Good snap, good kick, put it on the board. Ryan Havens with the extra point. Let's take a break. Bears 14, Aggies 14. 9.27 to go in the second quarter from Waco. You're listening to the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Thank you so much for bringing me here. I really love it here. Like, first impression, would you marry me? There's so many different things about me that I do not like. I am a princess, and I deserve to be treated like one. Miranda's not happy. Perhaps Jason could show some interest in how Miranda's feeling. I like peanuts. I like cashews, especially candy. Like, my life is so not together right now. Chestnuts, pine nuts, uh, anything in a trail mix. You know who would love to meet you? My mom. She's here. Mommy? Why waste time and money on bad dates when you can invest just 30 minutes to fill out the eHarmony questionnaire? Because once we get to know you, we'll match you with singles who've been pre-screened for compatibility with you. It's that simple. One 30-minute questionnaire or a lifetime of bad dates. You do the math. You know, the moment you called me, I put you right on speed dial. So no need to worry. I got you in there. I can call you all the time now. <laughs> Log on today and get your free personality profile. I am so hungover. And you've got to be at work in an hour. How come you feel so good? You drank more than I did. I took there. Remember? Chaser. Chaser Caplet. Take two Chaser Caplets with your first drink and two more later. Chaser is made of specially processed calcium carbonate and charcoal. These ingredients absorb toxins and acids, then pass them out of your system, kind of like a filter. The next morning, you'll wake up feeling great. Looks like you should have taken Chaser, too. Chaser products are available at these fine stores. 91-yard scoring drive by the Bears has tied this game. Baylor 14, Texas A&M 14. 9.27 to go second quarter. Dominique Ziegler, we're in the first half, folks. We're early in the first half, actually. Dominique Ziegler has four catches for 166 yards and one touchdown. His previous high game receiving was 141 yards at Oklahoma last season. Here is the Baylor kickoff. Going to be over the head of Kerry Franks out of the end zone. And again, the Aggies on the touchback will begin at their own 20-yard line. Bears 14, Aggies 14. Aggies ball at their own 20-yard line. Nine-minute mark of the first half of the second quarter. Hand off to Goodson. Sweeping around to the left side. Bears stretch it out. And nice tackle made after a one-yard gain. It is completely packed. And so far, it has been the game that everybody hoped it would be. Second down nine for the Aggies from the 21. Straight eye behind McGee, fakes the handoff. McGee now will run it up the middle to the 25. Good pursuit by Baylor. Vincent Rhodes and Nick Moore combine on the tackle. It'll be third down and five coming up for the Aggies from their 25. This is a big one here, third down and five from their own 25. Empty backfield, three receivers right, two left. McGee takes the snap in the shotgun. Pass over the middle. He's got Bennett. Watch out. Bennett's running, running free. If he's got the speed, he'll take it the whole way. Baylor is chasing, and they are not going to catch him. He dives into the end zone. Holy cow. C.J. Wilson, Anthony Arline were chasing. They couldn't get Martellus Bennett. It is a 75-yard touchdown pass from uh, Stephen McGee to Martellus Bennett. Well, they just took advantage of a big tight end that is a very athletic guy. They split him out wide and made it look like a four-receiver set, but it was really, I think, a tight end mixed in with three receivers. He just simply runs down the field about six, seven yards, turns around, and we had a missed tackle, and he outruns our secondary to the goal line. Yeah, somebody had a shot at him right after he made the catch. They didn't, uh, they didn't sniff a tackle, and Bennett was off to the races. Here's the extra point attempt now by Lane Newman. He missed one earlier tonight. Kicking into the south end. Snap is back. The kick is away. And this one is good. Ready for the A&M kickoff. A&M up 21-14 on the Bears. Kick is away. And Quito Teasley takes it. Center of the field at the three. Straight up the middle. 20. Spun around and down at the 24. Bears will have the ball at the 25. 
Tell you what, A&M has the, uh, a distinct advantage in time of possession here in the first half. Then when they score that quickly on a play like that, you don't want to give them that as well, do you? No, you don't. That was too easy. You want to make them run plays. I mean, that's what they, that's what they do. But when you give it to them quick, I mean, that gets their confidence back up. And you can tell just the list change in emotion and change in momentum with, it, with Baylor giving up that 75-yard touchdown. But that was a good play by Martellus Bennett, a good throw by Stephen, Stephen McGee. Gave you Dominique Ziegler's impressive receiving numbers. Martellus Bennett now four catches for 116 yards and two touchdowns himself. Flags drop as the Bears come to the line of scrimmage. Here's the call. Illegal first position, offense number 81. Breaking the huddle with more than 11 players for the sideline. Cannot do that will cost the Bears with 6.49 to go. Realize last week in the Kansas game, Baylor was not whistled for one single offensive wow. penalty. How about that? That's a, that's a vast improvement. That's coming a long way. Yeah. It? <laughs> One of the reasons they stayed in that game, or at least had the opportunity to come back, is they didn't beat themselves, at least for, as it relates to penalties. <laughs> Did have four penalties last week, but none on the offensive unit. This penalty cost the Bears five. It's first and 15 from the 20. Bell behind center. Mosley in the backfield. Mosley will get the handoff. Has a hole. It closes quickly. A short four-yard gain by Paul Mosley off left tackle. It is second down, 11 for the Bears from their 24-yard line. 5.47 to go second quarter. Handoff again, Mosley. Mosley powers his way forward to the 35, out to the 38-yard line. That's a first down on the big, strong run of Paul Mosley. I'll tell you what, I mean, Coach Hayes, Ricky, has come out and wanted to go north and south. It seems like the mentality is, okay, let's just change this game. Let's get the time of possession, and let's see what you are between the tackles. Well, yeah, and it really surprises me, but it's working well. And if you can do that, chew up some yardage on the ground, run some clock, that passing game will even be more effective. So a 14-yard game by Paul Mosley, and it's first and 10 Bears out to their own 38-yard line. With 5.23 to go in the second quarter. Mosley again, dial his number again. This time a yard, maybe two to the 40-yard line. Three consecutive runs by Paul Mosley. Stein Bell in the shotgun. Fenty in motion from left to right. Puts three receivers on the right side, the wide side of the field. Play clock at three seconds. Snap back to Bell's a little bit high. Gathers it in one-handed. Pressured and sacked back at the 25-yard line. Who got in? Big Chris Harrington, the sack leader for the Aggies, has a big one that will push the Bears all the way back to the 27-yard line. Oh, that was a big sack. I mean, any sack is a big sack, but when you lose probably what's close to about 15 yards, I mean, that's that's a big sack. And Sean didn't have the time to unload it uh, because he got Chris Harrington, who, like you said, John, came into the game with four and a half sacks on the season, put quick pressure on him, and now Baylor, that's third and 21 for their own 27 yard line. All right, and four minutes to go before halftime as J.J. Sandix third down, 21 for the Bears. Line of scrimmage is their own 27 yard line. Bell from the shotgun. It's a good snap from Blaylock. Pressured again. Watch out. Rolling to the right side. Throws it up the right sideline to Ziegler, but let's check it. I think he was out of bounds. Yeah, he didn't even make the catch. He was going out of bounds, didn't make the catch. It is fourth down and 21 for the Bears. First and 10 A&M from their eight-yard line. McGee hands the ball off to the fullback. He is barreling his way into the Baylor secondary. Brandon Stiggers makes the tackle of Chris Alexander, 242-pound junior from Humble. Again, a good burst out of there by, uh, by Alexander. And the Aggies have an 11-yard gain and a first down out to the 19, and they have called a timeout. That was a big gain, and what they did there is now they're really considering, let's see if we can go for the first down, not go for the first down, but go try to score some points. Because when you get that big a gain and get off your goal line, now you start trying to see, can we stretch the field, get points before the half ends. So a uh, big series of downs there for Baylor to limit a and to try to give the punters ball back and not give up any points uh, before the half ends. Well, they uh, did not call a timeout. We thought they did. So they are right to the line of scrimmage now from their own 20, I'm sorry, their own 19-yard line. First and 10, Aggies. Under three minutes to go before halftime. Double tight formation, straight eye behind quarterback McGee. Now behind his center. Gives the ball to Lane. Lane starts up the middle, cuts right. 
And gang tackled by the Bears at the 22-23 yard line. 2-12 and counting before halftime. Aggies leading by seven. Two receivers to the left side. Straight eye in the backfield. Bears coming on a blitz. Stephen McGee option to the left side. Flags down. McGee keeps tackled short of the 25-yard line. Maurice Linguist was coming on a blitz and all of a sudden changed direction. Was coming right at him. And he just uh, shifted right into helping make that tackle of Stephen McGee. But again, we'll check the flag. So it spots the ball at the 28-yard line where it's second down one for the Aggies. Second down one from the 28. 142 to go before halftime. Single receivers to either side. Javorski Lane in the backfield. Lane stays in to block. McGee throws it up the right sideline, and it is caught by Morrow at the Baylor 45. Pushed out of bounds by CJ, or I'm sorry, by Brandon Stiggers, but Morrow with the catch. A well-thrown ball by uh, Stephen McGee, and the Aggies now got to be thinking about putting more points on the board as they've reached Baylor territory. First and ten at the Baylor 44. A 28-yard gain as McGee hits uh, Morrow. Howard Morrow, a sophomore out of Keller Fossil Ridge High School. First and ten Aggies, 131 on the clock from the Baylor 44. Two receivers left, one right. Courtney Lewis in the backfield. McGee starts the option, now wants to throw. Now comes back to the right side. He Baylor can't get him. He thri- finally dumps it out of bounds. Alton Weidman was closing on him fast. 124 to go in the half. Bears coming. McGee steps up in the pocket. Now being chased. Now tackled. Back at the 47-yard line. Alton Weidman in to get the sack of quarterback Stephen McGee. Now the penalty may be coming. Another flag is down on the field. This one's going against the Bears. Here's our referee, Randy Crystal. Personal foul, number 96. Hit him in the fifth down. Good Well, instead of getting him for a sack outside the 45-yard line, using the helmet on the tackle, charged uh, against the Bears. That's a 15-yard walk-off, and the Aggies have it now at the Baylor 32-yard line. So the 15-yard penalty, and the Aggie drive is alive with a minute 10 to go. They still have two timeouts remaining should they need them. 105 and counting. First and 10 A&M from the Baylor, 32. Two receivers to either side. McGee has the snap in the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket, now wants to run, now is slung down. N.T. Robinson got him at the 31-yard line. Back at the line of scrimmage, it is second down and nine from the Baylor, 31. Aggies ball, Bears come up, maybe showing blitz. McGee steps up to the line of scrimmage, now back in the shotgun. Has the snap, flushed out of the pocket, and tripped up, balls on the ground. See if the Bears can cover it. They can't quite get it before it sails out of bounds. There's a flag down in the A&M backfield. All right, illegal grounding as Ricky Thompson. It looked like that uh, Stephen McGee had no idea Baylor was about to catch him from behind. It was Jeffrey Nelson who uh, caught him, tripped him up, and I'm not sure it was grounding so much as it was him just losing the handle on the ball. Well, I couldn't tell either, but I think he was trying to get rid of the football, but that was a huge play there. This forces third down and 21 from the 43. This is really taking AM out of field goal position if the Bears can stop him here. Bears need a big stop here. Third down, 21, 35 seconds to go before halftime. Jake Lamar is in the secondary. Josh Bell is out there. They'll hand it off to Courtney Lewis. Lewis will get minimal gain inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Picked up about six on that play. But again, I don't think the Aggies have the leg in the kicking department to uh, go for a field goal here. Lane Newman is their kicker. His longest this year is uh, 32 yards. The Aggies are going to use a timeout. Brantley is the punter. He will pooch it away. Bears will back away from it. Aggies will surround it and cover it at about the three-yard line. 
So again, Ricky, the Bears uh, keep the Aggies from without uh, adding any points on that final possession here before halftime. Well, and that's a really big stop. That could prove to be the difference in this football game. The Bears were on their heels, but they sucked it up, stopped A&M from, in fact, even attempting a field goal. That could be huge as we go into this second half, only down by seven. They're going to let the clock wind down with the new rule. The clock starts before you even snap the ball. So that is halftime. An entertaining first half here at Floyd Casey Stadium in front of an all-time record crowd of 51,385. The Aggies lead by a touchdown at halftime, 21-14, our halftime score. Before we go to a break, we'll catch up with uh, Bears head coach Guy Morris. Ricky Thompson will visit with him. And again, coming up at the half, we'll visit with a member or two of Baylor's new Hall of Fame class. We'll have all the stats from the first 30 minutes. And Bradford Hines will give us scores from around the Big 12 and nationally. What's our State Farm women's update? Right now, down to Ricky Thompson with Bears head coach Guy Morris. Coach's first half. Is Monday Night Football, coming this season on ESPN. ESPN, serving sports fans around the world. Monday Night Football is brought to you in part by the Villages of Indian Lakes, the region's largest master-planned eco-development. RV Life has broken new ground right here at RV Station. We're ready to help make your weekend getaway fun. Whether you're going camping or having a tailgate party with friends, RV Station has a great rental program to suit your needs. Choose from luxury motorhomes with all the amenities, or what about travel trailers with bunk beds? So no matter where you're headed, call RV Station to reserve your weekend getaway today. RV Station. Family fun starts here. You're watching FSN Southwest. Set for the second half kickoff, Bears and Aggies. A&M on top of Baylor, 21-14 as we begin the second half. Remember, the Bears won the toss to start the game, deferred to the second half, so the Bears will get the ball first. Kick is away from right to left by A&M. Will travel five yards deep, and Quito Teasley will take a knee. Bears will take it at their own 20. Want to check in real quickly with another Baylor's Hall of Fame inductees. Dion Miner won in an outstanding list of Baylor quarter minor milers. Dion, congratulations to you going into the Baylor Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you very much, John. It was an honor and privilege for me to be uh, inducted into that distinguished group. Boy, you're, it is a long list. Great uh, history of Baylor quarter milers here, isn't it? Oh, yes. That's the tradition uh, that Coach Clyde Hart brings to the program, and now it's in the hands of Coach Todd Harbor to continue to bring uh, great quarter miles and keep the tradition going. Yeah, we're very happy to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Let's get back to football. First play from the 20. Receiver around. Hand off to Thomas White going from right to left, and he's tripped up after a gain of, let's see where they spot it, at the 21. So a one-yard gain from their own 21, just underway in the second quarter. Some of the other individual stats from the first half. Sean Bell was 5 of 8 passing for 168 yards and one touchdown. Stephen McGee, 8 of 14 for 159 and two touchdowns. Second down, 9 play. Hand off to Mosley. Off the right side, he is tripped up after a 2-yard gain to the 23. A&M regained the lead, went up 14-7. Bears tied it at 14. The Aggies the score to go up 21-14, our current score. Fake the handoff, Sean Bell to throw. Has a man open, Thomas White diving, makes the catch just shy of the 40-yard line. Thomas White the grab, and it's a first down for the Bears. Ricky Thompson just shy of the 40-yard line. Well, I tell you, that was a great catch. That thing was just inches off the ground, I hope. It was, yeah. a, it was an awfully good grab. We'll have to watch it here. Can't see it on that one. The AM coaches obviously were yelling it was incomplete, but I think that was an outstanding catch by White. 17-yard gain. The Bears have the ball now out to their own 40-yard line. First possession of this third quarter. Trailing A&M, 21-14. Bears to the line of scrimmage, traveling left to right. Two receivers left, two to the right side. Mosley in the backfield. Bell has the snap. Dumps it over the middle to Carl Sims at the 45, out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Got a couple of guys in this game tonight that are two of only a handful playing two sports in uh, Division 1A. Uh, one, uh, one 
One of those being football. Carl Sims is one, plays football here, of course. Plays on Scott Drew's basketball team. Then Martellus Bennett, of course, uh, tight end for the Aggies. Plays for Billy Gillespie on that Aggie basketball team. That is picked second in the Big 12 this year. Expecting a lot from A&M basketball this season. Eight-yard pickup, second down eight for the Bear, or second down two from the 48. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Mosley in the backfield, flanked off to the right side of Sean Bell. Bell will give the ball to Mosley. He's got a first down. He's at the 45, stretches his way to the A&M 43-yard line. At times tonight, Paul Mosley has really delivered for the Bears. That time he gets a big first down gain. Bears have it now in Aggie territory at the 43. Mosley nine carries for 38 yards this evening. 12.45 and counting here in the third quarter. Opening possession, opening drive by the Bears. They've got it at the A&M, 43, first and 10. Three receivers right. Thomas White, Trey Payne, and Dominique Ziegler. Trent Shelton, I don't think has a catch tonight, does he? Trent Shelton split wide to the left side. Snap the bell, fakes the handoff. Pressure, rolls right, passes on the run. Caught by Thomas White. Stretches for the 35-yard line as he goes out of bounds. Missy Tupa with the tackle for Texas A&M, pushing him out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the A&M 36. So a seven-yard gain for the Bears will leave them second down and three. John Bell now at 200 yards passing in the game this evening. Gives him 11 straight games with 200-plus yards passing and at least one touchdown pass. Both those Baylor school records. Back Bell has been over 300 yards the last two games, including a school record 394 last week in the win over Kansas. Second down three for the Bears from the A&M, 36. Hand off to Mosley. Starts left, finds a hole, burst his way forward inside the 30 to the 28. Good tough running again by Paul Mosley. A, let's see, an eight-yard pickup, and the Bears have it at the Aggie, 28, first and 10. 12-11 and counting here in the third quarter. Bears trailing 21-14, but a nice drive coming out at halftime for the Bears. Started at their own 20, they've reached the Aggie 28. Trips to the left side, one receiver, Carl Sims to the right side. Bell in the shotgun, has the snap. Looks left, looks over the middle, fires, he's got Ziegler. His favorite receiver tonight, Dominique Ziegler, has another catch, and Ziegler has it at the 15-yard line. 13-yard gain, another first down for the Bears, who are in the red zone on their first possession here in the third quarter. Well, John, this is the ideal drive for Baylor here to start out this second half. Uh, they've been very very efficient, ran the ball well, and then Sean is finding his receivers. And once again, Dominique Ziegler picks up a big game there. And a is dropping a lot of guys, so they're leaving that middle pretty soft. On the night, Dominique Ziegler, five catches for 179 yards. School record is 197 in a game. Gerald McNeil against Arkansas in 1981. First and 10 Bears from the 14. Bell looking for more through the air. He's got his tight end, Jordan Adams. Adams has the catch. Gang tackled by the Aggies at the five-yard line. Jordan Adams, the junior out of Arlington Lamar, a transfer from New Mexico. Just his third catch on the season, but that one will get the Bears. Let's see, they're going to spot it at the, not the five, but the seven-yard line, it looks like. Hang on, they're setting the ball down about the eight-yard line. So the eight is where it is. We'll leave the Bears second down and three. Jordan Adams, a good Lamar boy there from the same school I went there to. There you John. go. That's right. Hey, uh, he, I mean, he carried two or three guys, but they're giving, and is so scared of the guys getting behind him, they're giving up the short underneath stuff. Offset eye left in the backfield. They'll hand the ball to Mosley. Mosley with a five to the one-yard line for Paul Mosley. First down, Bears. They've got a first and goal coming up. Knocking on the door, about to tie this game up early third quarter. Well, Rick, Ricky, it looks like right now this is a test of wheels, running the ball well, being physical. Well, it is, and this is a big flip, guys. AM was about to put points on the board before half. This could be a 14 point swing. Very good point, Rick. The Bears got to punch it in. First and goal from the one. Couple of tight ends to the right side. Mosley gets the call. He dives into the end zone. Touch.
touchdown, Paul Mosley. Did his best Superman imitation, diving over the goal line, and the Bears have punched it in for the score. I'm going to tell you, if Lee Hayes could have, he could have scripted this better. I know Coach Morris as well. I bet you they went in and said, you know what, we're going to keep mixing it up, but we're going to start being more physical because they feel that they can push A&M off the ball and with Paul Mosley pick up yards on the ground. And that will help with the time of possession, John, which we're really behind on, and that will help even the game out if we're able to run the ball effectively. That was basically 19 to, uh, to 11 in the first half. All right, A&M is going to challenge that touchdown by Paul Mosley. Now, he didn't, say, he didn't say reviewed, you notice. He said challenge, so that means Dennis Francioni has used his one challenge for the game. Ricky Thompson will come to you. Did that ball uh, may have popped out as Mosley dove across the line, but all you've got to do is get it over the plane of the goal line, right? Now, there's no question the ball was out before he hit the ground, but I think clearly he was across the goal line before this ball came out. Oh, here, Reveille down there. You got a friend? <laughs> uh, if, he, if, he, if he's down here, he's not a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, the play is being reviewed. The play under review is the touchdown dive by Paul Mosley. Most often, you're not going to lose that ball in midair, and if you cross the plane of the goal line, it's a touchdown, even if the ball pops out upon contact to the ground. Pretty quick review. Here's Randy Crystal. After review on the field. All right, we'll keep track of those timeouts a little better tonight also. We lost track last week. <laughs> exactly. But by the challenge, uh, by A&M not being overturned, that, that is one of their timeouts. So they'll have two remaining for the remainder of this game. It is a Baylor touchdown. Now Baylor extra point will tie the game at 21. Well, Baylor did a good job here on the television screen of not showing that play. So, Fran, I don't think his crew had an opportunity to, to make a decision on whether or not they saw something on the screen. So that was a big one. He loses the timeout and his challenge for the game on a play that looked pretty obvious. Paul Mosley had flown across the goal line before the ball came loose. Ryan Havens, the kicker for the Bears. Daniel Sepulveda is the holder. Nick Myatt in his third consecutive game as the deep snapper in the absence of Jonathan Weeks. Nick Myatt has done an outstanding for the job for the Bears, filling in at that deep snapper position. Snap back is down, the hold by Sepulveda, and the kick by Ryan Havens is good. And with 10-19 to go in the third quarter, it's a tie ball game in the Battle of the Brazos. Baylor 21, Texas A&M 21. We'll be right back on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. This is an actual reenactment. Mary had just picked up her kids and was heading home to make dinner. Just then, in the blink of an eye, nothing happened. Events like this occur countless times every day. Progressive Direct is doing something about it. Giving real savings to these good drivers. In fact, good drivers who switched to Progressive saved hundreds right away. Tim's about to do something he's wanted to do for a long time. Feel the wind in his hair. Why? Because Tim used to look like this, but now he's had his hair restored through a proven revolutionary procedure. Here's how. Hair in the back of your head is genetically predisposed to grow. That's your donor area. We take some of that hair and move it to the balding or thinning area. It's just that simple. It's your own hair, so you get the most natural results available, guaranteed. Being bald's okay for some guys, it just wasn't for me. Look at this. It's my hair, and it's growing. Tim looks great. The results were incredible. He looks 10 years younger. You have a choice to get your hair back permanently. Call 800-273-4028 now for your free consultation and receive up to three months of free gas. Offer expires November 30th. That's 800-273-4028. No obligation and financing is available. Hey, fans, call Domino's now in Hewitt, Belmead, Lake Air, or the Baylor campus for the 555 deal. Three medium, one topping pizzas for $5 a piece. If you call now, you can enjoy your pizza hot and fresh during the game. Get the door. It's Domino's. Baylor football also brought to you in part by Reliant Energy. Want to save money on your electricity? To learn more about how you can save, call Reliant Energy at 1-866-RELIANT or visit Reliant.com. 
Game tonight also brought to you by our good friends at State Farm, a proud supporter of the Baylor Bears. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Kevin Kraus representing the local State Farm agents, good partners of ours, receiving a plaque on field from Sean Beckett earlier this evening. Send our best wishes to Sean Beckett, who is uh, leaving us. Is Sean still back there? He's already gone. He's already gone. Yeah. Now he's on his way to uh, greener pastures at the University of Pittsburgh, going back to his hometown to work for the ISP property there. And we wish him all the best. That we do. It's a little colder there, but he's from there, so he should be, I think you say, he should be able to get used to that pretty quick. Pretty good trade-off, I'm sure. <laughs> Baylor kickoff following their 11 play, 80 yard scoring drive that has tied this game. End over end kick, chance to run this one back by the Aggies, Pierre Brown. Brown to the 20, out to the 30 yard line. I think the first kick return opportunity tonight by AM, and Baylor's done a good job there because Brown has a 28 yard kick return average. First and 10 for the Aggies from their own 30. 21 21 our score. Turn handoff to the fullback. First man through is Chris Alexander. Good tough running by Alexander out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Back to play. First and 10 A&M from their own 41. 9.25 to go in this third quarter. Scoring drive by the Bears was 11 plays, 80 yards, 4.41 off the clock. First and 10 play. McGee option to the right side. He will keep it. Good, tough tackle. Good pursuit by the Bears. Nick Moore and Alton Weidman combine on the tackle, but there is a flag lying in the A&M backfield. And John, it's right where M.T. Robinson. Holding. A little option play by AM to the right side, and MT Robinson, I think, got a little penetration, and he got form tackled by the offensive line. So he wouldn't uh, get enough penetration to make the tackle on Stephen McGee. But that's a big penalty because that's a that's a holding penalty right at about the line of scrimmage. So now you have about a first and 20 uh, versus a probably was going to be a second and eight or second and nine. Well, pushes the ball all the way back to the 31 yard line. They need to reach the Baylor 49 for a first down. So it is first and 20 for the Aggies. Single receivers to either side, first and 20. 21-21 our score, 8.55 to go, third quarter. McGee takes the snap, passes right side, wide open. Catch is made out at the 40-yard line. Catch was made by uh, Irvin Taylor, I believe his first catch tonight. Taylor, the junior, out of mission. Second down 11, A&M from their own 40-yard line. McGee takes the snap in the shotgun, gives it to Javorski Lane. Lane up the middle. Gang tackled by the Bears at the 45. They're five of eight tonight, so very good in this category. Third down and five it is. McGee wants to throw. Passes it right side for Bennett. Oh, and he dropped it. Had it in his hands and dropped it. Got it over the outstretched arms of James Todd, who may have deflected that ball a little bit. But uh, it was incomplete, and it's fourth down for the Aggies. And I'll tell you what that was. Is A&M came out in a typical shotgun set. Two receivers, or at least a tight end and a receiver to the top side. Two receivers to the bottom side. And what happened is the outside receiver just ran a little five-yard hitch route. The tight end, Martellus Bennett, who's been doing a really good job, ran a corner out. And James Todd just got, I think he just got in his face or got swiped the ball that blocked his vision, and he dropped that ball. Punt by A&M is away. Carl Sims back to receive. Carl won't have a chance to get to this when the Aggies will touch it dead at the 20-yard line. Change of possession. Bears ball from their own 20. First and 10. Bell steps up, passes over the middle. This one is caught by Justin Akers. Akers out to the 25-26 yard line. Twin receivers to both sides. Second down two for the Bears from their own 28. Bell with the snap. Has time, passes crossing route. Carl Sims has it. Flag thrown. Across the field from the near side line judge. Carl Sims crossing and got maybe a half yard of the 28 and a half, but let's check the flag. Holding looks like preliminary. And he threw that. Holding, holding. Carl Sims, number 72. Second down. That's a big penalty, too. That, that pushes us back quite a bit, but I tell you. That, that linesman here, he threw that flag about 30 yards. <laughs> he did. He was on the sideline, wasn't he? He yes, threw it he to was. midfield. He wanted to make sure. So the penalty will back the Bears to their 18-yard uh, line. 
Loss of 10 on that play where it will now be second down at 12. Second and 12 from the 18. It's 5.58 and counting in the third quarter. Baylor 21, Texas A&M 21. Bears scored on their opening possession. A nice 80-yard drive here to come out after halftime to tie it. Second down, 12 now. Trips left, one receiver right. Pressure coming. Passes away. It's caught by Brandon Whitaker. Trying to shake him, and he gets fine to the 25. Out to the 28-yard line. Maybe a late hit. No call. 10-yard pickup to the 28-yard line. And good running after the catch. Ricky Thompson by Brandon Whitaker. Well, it was good running, but it was also a good play by Sean Bell. He was in a lot of trouble back there. Had to throw that football off balance, and then Whitaker made a great cut inside off his blockers to pick up yardage. That was a big play, guys, turning it back into a third and three when we were in the hole. John Bell this half, Jeremy Butel tells us, is seven of seven for 70 yards. Has not missed on a pass here in the third quarter. And John, he's only thrown 15 passes for the game. We're halfway, more than halfway to the third quarter. How about that? Very efficient. After throwing 55 last week in the win over Kansas. Big third down play, third down and a couple from the 28. Bears need to cross the 30-yard line for a first down here. Bell steps back. Baylor has Baylor, first timeout. called a timeout. Here's the third down two play for the Bears with twin receivers to both sides. Bell has the snap, drops it. Bears pick it up and no chance. Snap back looked like bounced off the hands of Sean Bell. He and uh, Brandon Whitaker were right there trying to cover it. Whitaker, I think, got on top of it, but as he did so, there were about three white-shirted Aggie defenders on top of him. Well, and it was bringing the blitz, and you're right, John. That was a bobbled snap, and it looks like they were either going to hand it to Brandon, try to try to fake and him out like they're going to pass it, but it may have been just a fake handoff and then a play-action pass. So uh, that was a big break for AM. The muffed snap by Sean, but now you bring in Daniel, and he hopefully he gets off a good punt to pin AM back. Daniel tonight, four punts, I'm sorry, three punts for a 49-yard average. It's a nice, high nose-up spiral. Chad Schrader will call for the fair catch and take it just shy of the 30-yard line. Aggies ball, Stephen McGee, the sophomore from Burnett, has thrown only one interception all season. Single receivers to either side. They will hand this one off to Worski Lane. Big hole up the middle, 40. 45, veers outside to the left side and pushed out of bounds at the Baylor 47-yard line. What a big run by Javorski Lane. Covers 24 yards at the Aggies in Baylor territory. Well, you saw that play. That's a little zone read play in which Steve McGee was reading the defensive end on the backside, and he read him, and he saw that he did not chase Javorski Lane, and that was Julian Hill. So he gave the ball to, to Javorski, and he made that cutback from right to left right where the defensive end would have chased him. So uh, you see how these plays fit together. That's a good game on first down. Jeffrey Nelson, Marcus Foreman, defensive ends for the Bears. Corey Ford is in there. Clayton Scholes, a defensive tackle. First and 10 for A&M from the Baylor 47. And off again, right up the middle. Tough running inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Four-yard pickup, second down six for the Aggies from the Baylor 43. Single receivers to either side. McGee starts the option, now back pedals, hit as he throws. Ball is caught. Chad Schrader has it. Pushed out of bounds at the Baylor 20. Nice job by Stephen McGee to find Schrader. Schrader has a first down and a pickup of 23 yards. And the Aggies have reached the Baylor 19. Yeah, just off a little option, a little spin option look. They look, counter option. He runs, runs to the right. He had a post route that was covered up, well covered by the Baylor secondary. But Chad Schrader worked all the way from the right side of the field to the left side. I'm like, I'm just going to call a deep drag. And uh, laid it on him in stride to pick up that first down. First catch tonight by Schrader, the Aggies' leading receiver on the season. Gives the Aggies a first down at the Baylor 19. Four down linemen dig in defensively for the Bears. Try to get a stop here in the red zone. Option right side, pitch. This one is Goodson. Goodson at the 15, hemmed in and tackled just inside the 15-yard line. McGee from the shotgun has the snap. Option to the right side. He will keep this one. He's to the 10. He's hit hard and bumped out of bounds. Good hit by Baylor to punish him as he goes out of bounds, but it's a first down for the Aggies at the 8-yard line. Stiggers delivered the blow and made the tackle. Ricky Thompson, the Aggies have a first and goal at the Baylor 8. 
Well, they do, and that's one of the things these guys talked about at halftime was punishing the quarterback, make him pay every time they run that option, whether he pitches or whether he keeps it. Hopefully that pays off eventually. Tell you what, uh, good point there because they have done it the last two times, one on a keep, one on a pitch. He's been hit hard. As his team at the line of scrimmage, first and goal from the eight for Texas A&M. 21-21 our score. And off to Lane, left side, spun around and down at the five-yard line. Joe Pavelic will get credit for that tackle. Martellus Bennett has two touchdowns receiving tonight. He's tight to the right side. Here's the play, second and goal from the five. And off to Mike Goodson, down the line to the right side. Bears string it out and make the tackle at about the three-yard line. Third down goal for the Aggies from just inside the four-yard line. Empty backfield. Stephen McGee steps back into the shotgun. Here's the third down play. Taylor jumps. Did A&M throw him off sides? Ball start, John. Preliminary indication. That's big there because that's five yards and pushes you back. Ball start. Bears dig in defensively. Big third down goal play for the Aggies. Stephen McGee. Quarterback draw up the. Bears have got him on the ground inside the five-yard line. McGee dangerous with his feet all night. That time the quarterback draw, and uh, it was Marcus Foreman who made the tackle for the Bears at about the four-and-a-half-yard line, and it's fourth down and goal for Texas A&M. And as this quarter it winds down, John, with 20 seconds left, you see the difference that five-yard penalty made because Stephen McGee has that option from the five-four-yard line. He scores a touchdown. Instead, A&M will set up for an apparent field goal. Check and see if they follow through from it. It'll be spotted at the 12, a 22-yard attempt from the right hash. Hang on, whistles as the play is about to begin, and that's the end of the third quarter. So the field goal attempt will take place the first play of the fourth quarter. Through three quarters in the 103rd Battle of the Brazos, our score, Baylor 21, Texas A&M 21, fourth quarter straight ahead on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. It's good old-fashioned hard work. It's pushing to the limit. No pain. No gain. GMAC and Lucy are getting ready for the season, and it's here. Opening night is Saturday, November 4th, against the Western Conference champion Dallas Mavericks. GMAC, this is how we do it old school. So get your tickets now by calling 713-627-DUNK or by visiting rockets.com. One, two, searching for your dream car? The search ends at Parkway Motors in Bryan. Contact us today for the keys to the vehicle you've always wanted. Savor every detail. Feel every sound. Immerse yourself in stunning original programming. Live every moment in high definition. Discovery HD Theater. Your window on the world. You're watching FSN Southwest. All right, Bradford, thank you very much. That was a game I believe Tech stormed out to a 21-0 lead in. Now it has uh, closed to a three-point deficit. We'll keep you updated there. Not a lot of folks interested in that game going on in Lubbock, where the Bears will be next Saturday. Through three quarters, quick look at the stats. A&M, 366 yards of offense, 192 passing, 174 rushing. Very balanced, as you would expect. Bears, 283 total offense, 238 passing, 45 yards rushing for the Bears in this game. We're tied at 21. And nobody is leaving this game early tonight. You're right we, about that. Huh? As we move into the fourth quarter, the Aggies are setting up for an apparent field goal. Rather short one spotted at the 12 would be a 22-yard field goal from the right half. If I'm Baylor here, I'm not going after the block. Here, John, I'm playing safe because Coach Fran is known to 
you know, run a few trick plays. So make this guy kick the field goal, and that's a win for Baylor. Wayne Newman is the kicker, 6 of 7 on the season. Missed an extra point kick earlier this evening. Again, from the right hash, a 22-yard effort from Lane Newman, the left-footed kicker. The Bears blocked it. They got in and blocked it. Braylon Davis came in, go for the ball, and blocked it. Hang on. Hang on. There's a flag down. Did they run into him, or what's the call? It was blocked by Braylon Davis. Let's check the flag. That should be picked up, John. It was tip ball. That's right. And they, they did, John, run into the kicker, but if the ball is tipped, you can run straight over him if you want to. So, Ricky, I don't know if you saw that play, but that was excellent by Brecklin to get in there and get his hands on that ball. Well, actually, I was behind it, and all I could hear was the thud, and I knew somebody had a hand on it. <laughs> then the ball started floating in the end zone, and C.J. Wilson did the smart thing. He just got away from the football, let it roll dead. What a big play there. Outstanding job by uh, Braylon Davis and that Baylor kick team to block it and keep it tied at 21 here in the fourth quarter. Please turn five seconds off the game clock. Clock still showing 15 minutes. They're going to take five seconds off, so 14.55 remaining in the game. Bears have the ball. They'll take over at their own 20-yard line with uh, the majority of this fourth quarter to go tied at 21. And, John, this is the big drive for the Baylor offense. Baylor's just got the momentum yet home. A&M is supposed to get to the point. They had uh, second down, third down, and goal from the four, get a penalty, have to go for a field goal, get a blocked field goal, a Baylor opportunity to go ahead. First and 10 Bears from their own 20. John Bell hands to Paul Mosley, stringing it out to the right side, and he's tackled for a loss of a yard. Loss of one on that play to the 19-yard line. Second down, 11 coming up for the Bears. Should have tried to break that ball back to his left. He actually tried to stretch it out to the right side of the field, but he got tackled for a loss. But uh, and now you have second down and 11, which Sean is looking for as Baylor comes in. It's three wide, four wide set. It's something across the middle as AM will sag for a six, seven yard gain if you can't get the first down. Second down, 11 from the 19. Bell looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Hit as he throws. Ziegler can't handle it out at the 40 yard line. Boy, you don't see that very often. Ziegler had it, hit him in the mitts, and he couldn't hold on to it. The third down and 11 coming up. Instead, it's third down and 11 from the 19. Bell to throw, pressure, gets away from one man, rolls to the right side, buys himself some time. Now going to try to run it up the right sideline. He gets to the 28, but needed to get to the 30. So the Bears uh, facing now fourth down and a couple from their own 28. Jason Jack was chasing him, the right side defensive end. And Sean Bell may be down after running the ball at the on that play. He felt awkward, but John, as he went to the sideline, he had about three A&M guys running around. He's trying to stretch and make a couple moves, and he felt awkwardly. So hopefully it's just uh, maybe just getting hit, and he's got a stinger or has been stung. But uh, uh, he did the smart thing. He didn't have anyone open because he scrambled to the side where he only had one receiver. The other three receivers had run a drag route from the top side to the back towards the press box side. So... Uh, Hopefully he'll get up here and he'll be okay. It's just a stinger. Luckily, and I say luckily, uh, we have to punt the ball, so we're punting back on defense so he doesn't have to go back in immediately. Well, I'll tell you what, fans giving him a hand as he stand, stands up, but he is limping noticeably. Looks like on that right ankle. He's going to walk very slowly across the field from the far side of the near side. We'll get Ricky to check on Sean Bell and find out his status. There's our facing an apparent punting situation here. Big night going for Dominique Ziegler, who knows how important this game is for Baylor. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is basically, I think, to tie second place or take overall second place, something like that. But it's just another opportunity for us to get one step closer to our bowl game. Uh, and it just happens to be a &M this week, so that's who we're going to have to go put out there and play hard against and try and beat them. This team very focused in uh, getting to that goal of becoming bowl eligible this year. That's the way they approach this one, to get one step closer. Bears hustle onto the field. Daniel Sepulveda on the punt. Good snap back to him from Nick Myatt. Nose up, spiral is away. Chad Schrader will back away from it. It bounces out of bounds on the far sideline. And a reminder that live video streaming is powered by Roadrunner. High speed online. 
Roadrunner, the best way to keep up with the Bears on the web. Before play resumes, let's check in with Ricky Thompson. Ricky, what can you tell us about Sean Bell? Well, it's not an ankle, it's a right knee. It's awfully sore. They're going to firm it up a little bit with some tape, and I expect Sean to go back in the game, but I can tell you his mobility will be affected. All right, Rick, thanks very much for that. Aggies have the ball following a 37-yard punt by Daniel Sepulveda. Aggies first and 10 at their own 35. Hand off to Courtney Lewis, jumps over a tackler right at the line of scrimmage and gets to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. Second down eight for the Aggies from their own 37. Hand off again. Nope, McGee kept this one. That's dangerous to the 40, to the 45, to the 50-yard line by the quarterback, Stephen McGee. Chased down and tackled from behind by Jeffrey Nelson. But again, Stephen McGee has been more dangerous tonight when he's kept that football instead of pitching it away. That's right, John. I mean, Baylor is really paying attention to Dvorsky Lane and Courtney Lewis and, and, and their last tailback. I forget his last name right now, but uh, that's just off the same look. Uh, two backs, shotgun formation, run the zone read. That time he took it out on option play. He's their leading carrier tonight, 15 carries for 83 yards. First and 10, Aggies. This time he will hand it off to Javorski Lane off the left side. Barrels his way into Baylor territory at about the 47, 48-yard line. Teams have split the last two seasons, both games in overtime. Second down seven for A&M from the Baylor 48. McGee, a lot of time. Shovel pass forward, juggled and caught by A&M. Boy, good job hanging on to that ball. That's Javorski Lane who held on to that little shovel pass and gets to the Baylor 42-yard line where it will be third down and uh, third and about a yard, third and a long yard for the Aggies. I'll tell you, that was a good play. Stephen McGee, he was pushing up into the line of scrimmage. He was trying to buy a little bit more time, but he saw the pocket close on him, so he just pitched the ball forward to Dvorsky Lane, and he did a good job of holding on to that as he was tackled immediately. So a uh, good play by Stephen McGee and Dvorsky Lane, and good stop by Baylor to keep him short of the first down. A&M 5 of 10 on third down conversions tonight. This one is third and a long yard. Fake the handoff. McGee has it. He will pitch it to Goodson left side to the 40 to the 35 and pushed out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Boy, it looked like McGee was going to keep that one again himself, but he pitched it late. Goodson picked up yardage to the 33. So another first down for the Aggies. They've reached the Baylor 33 with 10.35 to play in a 21-21 ball game here in Waco. And a &M, this is the way they like to play. They like to grind out the game. They, although they're very balanced, they get late in the game, get a tight game, they want to run the ball at you. And now what they're doing is basically running zone read plays, option plays, and you have to try to let, keep laying on Stephen McGee, hope, hoping that sooner or later he'll lay it down because of all the cumulative hits. First down, 10 for the Aggies. They've reached the Baylor 33-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left side. Lane in the backfield off to the left side of quarterback McGee. Lane gets the carry. They're going to reverse it. Coming to the left side. McGee throws the block. 30, 25 to the 24-yard line. Pierre Brown on the reverse. Pierre Brown gets to the 24, and it's going to be uh, very close, if not another Aggie first down. Well, just a, just a reverse playoff off of some very similar action. They've run the whole game. It was a good play because, actually, they caught the defensive end. I believe that was Julian Hill on the backside just asleep just a tad bit and they were able to, get, able to get Pierre Brown from the right side all the way back around the left side to pick up that pick up eight yards well actually nine yards yep Jeremy Butel tells us nine yard gain leaves the Aggies second and one from the Baylor 24 tied in on the right side is Martellus Bennett straight eye behind McGee hand off to Alexander the fullback right up the middle good tough running by Alexander he's got a first down and plenty more to the 17-yard line, move the chains, keep the clock winding. You're right, J.J., this is A&M style. They're just grinding it out on the ground right now here in the fourth quarter. And if you're Baylor, what you want to do now is if they push it inside the 20. You just want to bend but don't break. Uh, A&M doesn't have confidence right there, in the, right now in their special teams. Uh, they have missed an extra point, missed a field goal, so just bend. And here's the time to step up and make a play. Aggies at about 215 yards rushing on the night. First and 10 from the 17. McGee it off. And Courtney Lewis is slowed up. He tries to reverse field, and he's tackled back at the 20. 
Marcus Foreman got him back at the 20 yard line. Loss of a couple on that play. And Courtney Lewis, I think he thought he was playing against a little slower defense. He did that before where he started to the left side off a little just straight dive action. He made a few moves and he cut back. And this time, you know, play your responsibility. He was the backside defensive end and just waited. And Courtney Lewis came straight to it. Foreman with the tackle, loss of two. It is second down 12 for the Aggies from the Baylor 20-yard line. Straight on behind the quarterback, McGee. Fakes the handoff, wants to throw. Throwing for the end zone. The ball is up for grabs, and it's knocked away. C.J. Wilson there to knock it away. Who is that? Is that Big Bennett? Martellus Bennett, the intended receiver for Texas A&M. Incomplete, Ricky Thompson brings up third down and 12. Well, C.J. had great timing on his jump there. He's obviously overmatched with the size of the receiver, but he went up just at the right time, got a hand on the ball. That was a big play. That prevented a touchdown. Now the Aggies are faced with third and 13. That's an All-America play right there by C.J. Wilson. It is third down and 12 from the 20 for Texas A&M. 8.33 to play in the ball game. Baylor 21, Texas A&M 21. Baylor fans are waving those ground towels here at sold out Floyd Casey Stadium. Third down, 12 play. Snap back to McGee. Wants to throw. Passes left side. This one's caught by Bennett at the five. He's to the three yard line. Martellus Bennett, a big catch. Ball was knocked away from him on the previous play. He made the catch there. The Yankees have first and goal at the Baylor three. That was just a combination route. Martellus Bennett that time flexed out to the left side away from the press box side. He had two receivers, and he simply dug down about 10 yards and ran an out route, and he was wide open as the outside receiver just cleared out. And he's the guy you have to watch because he's the one that's made all the plays, having 133 yards on five catches with two touchdowns. Corey Ford comes in on that defensive front for the Bears. It is first and goal for A&M from the three-yard line. Double tight formation. And off to the back is Javorski Lane, and the Bears string it out to the right side and make the tackle for maybe a loss of one. Marcus Foreman in on that. Good job by Baylor to really string it out toward the right sideline. They did lose a yard on the play. It is second down and goal from the four. And you can bet uh, that on Javorski Lane, you typically want to see him run between the tackles if you're an AM fan, but uh, they had him on a stretch play to the right side, and uh, he got him. Uh, east and west of north and south and we're able to get him to the ground but I'm looking for play action here to Martellus Bennett because he's been a big play player. Bennett is tight to the left side. Joey Thomas is tight to the right side. Second and goal from the four. Up the middle. Bears are all over. All over and no gain to the four yard line. Nick Moore the first to hit him. Corey Ford was in there as well. Joe Favelic off the bottom of that pile. It is third down and goal from the four for Texas A&M. See if the Bears got one more stop in them right here. Third down and goal from the four for Texas A&M. 6.58 and counting. 21-21 our score. And John, on this play, A&M will probably spread us out. Uh, and then what they'll do that to spread us out is you got to watch Stephen McGee. Third and goal from the nine, he ran a quarterback draw. Here we go, third and goal. Snap back to McGee, wants to throw. Right side, incomplete. Schrader dove for it, couldn't make the catch. It is fourth down and goal for A&M from the four-yard line. And John, that was big because Schrader was open on the right side at the very front of the end zone. And Stephen McGee hit him just a little bit too far to the sideline, and Schrader only had one hand on it, couldn't pull it in. And that's a bullet that Baylor has dodged because the field goal unit, and I would really play safe here because this guy hadn't hit a field goal today, it seems like, and I would bet Fran wouldn't be try to do a fake. Same spot as last one was blocked. Spotted at the 12. 22-yard attempt straight on for Lane Newman. Snap is back. Hold is down. Kick. Good. Lane Newman. The Aggies have broken the tie with 6.32 to play. It's now Texas A&M 24. Baylor 21. On the Baylor ISP Sports Network. 25 years in America, 20 drivers and two fanatics. So celebrate Mitsubishi's 25 years at Don Herring Mitsubishi. Get an incredible deal on every Mitsubishi with discounts and rebates up to $10,000.
percent financing or drive a new Eclipse for just two thirty nine a month. Don Harry Mitsubishi, Dallas, Irving, Plano. Harry dot com. Seven-time award-winning, ready for anything but sitting around. Fifty-nine bucks goes a long way these days at your local Suzuki dealer during quad fair. This is an actual reenactment. Mary had just picked up her kids and was heading home to make dinner. Just then, in the blink of an eye, nothing happened. Events like this occur countless times every day. Progressive Direct is doing something about it. Giving real savings to these good drivers. In fact, good drivers who switched to Progressive saved hundreds right away. Well, a lot of folks, uh, JJ, we could go around this stadium, 51,000 plus. They'd all have their stories, favorite stories about Baylor versus A&M and the history of this series. One man I know that loved Baylor football and loved uh, these games. The man who lived here in Wayne Jackson, and uh, Wayne passed away over the summer. But he is a guy that uh, would have loved to be here at this game this evening. And uh, I know if there's an opportunity, he's probably looking down and watching it. But uh, Wayne, I know, would have loved being a part of this atmosphere tonight, the great crowd. And it's turned out to be a great game, also a three-point game with six and a half minutes to go. And you couldn't have expected anything less. I mean, these teams are very even. You see the common opponents, the Army game, a and barely beats Army. Baylor loses to Army in overtime. Kansas game was close to both teams. Uh, they've had common opponents, and you can tell just by the scores that these teams are very evenly matched. And it, it speaks it speaks of volumes because right now AM leads 24-21, six minutes and 32 seconds left to go in the game, and Baylor's about to get the ball back with the opportunity to, to tie to move ahead. Remember the last two games in this long and storied rivalry have gone to overtime. Right now a three-point game with 6.32 on the clock, and here's the AM kickoff. Line drive kick, picked up by Quido Teasley, finally gets control of it at the 10 to the 15 to the 17-yard line by Quido Teasley. Across the 20, actually, he'll get to the 23-yard line. Bears going to have the ball in their possession. 6-22 remaining in the game with A&M leading now 24-21. Well, this is a big drive, John, and, and we know Sean was hurt on the last play, and he's been moving around a little gingerly. So the bait, it's going to be incumbent on the offensive line really to protect him, uh, to keep him from having to sprint out because that's what gets limited when you kind of have a leg that's not feeling well. So uh, we'll have to run the ball effectively like we've been doing and give him time to throw without having to move much. All right, the senior quarterback is a gamer. Sean Bell is back out there. He is 12 of 18 tonight. I'm sorry, 12 of 16 for 238 yards. We'll watch his mobility. First and 10 from the 23. Bell flares it out. Trent Shelton, his first catch of the night, left side, and pit out of bounds hard at the 30-yard line. First catch tonight by Trent Shelton. There's leading receiver coming in to this game. Watch the clock, 5.57 to play. Aggies lead by three. Hand it off to, is it Mosley or Whitaker? Counter play to Whitaker, off right tackle, and he gets across the 30 to the 33-yard line. First and 10 Bears from their own 33-yard line, 5.35 to play. Three receivers right, one left, snap back off Bell's hands, picks it up, now rolls right, passes right. Oh, it's caught at the 40-yard line. Thomas White out to the 45 to the 50. Now finally pulled down, a and trying to strip the ball, and Thomas White goes down at the 48-yard line. How about Sean Bell there? The ball sort of skipped off his hands on the snap. He recovered it nicely. He rolled out to the right and found Thomas White for 15 yards. I'll tell you, I mean, that was a big-time play. And you can tell he's a fifth-year senior with the poise because typically a bad snap to a young player means open run straight up the field. But Sean caught the ball, got a great bounce, and then kept his head, looked to the right, and uh, Mr. White was wide open out to the right side and picked up the first down. From the 48-yard line, the Bears own 48, first and 10, 5.09 to go. Handoff this time, up the middle, Brandon Whitaker. He is wrapped up and tackled for a short one-yard gain. Stopped shy of the mid -down, uh, midfield 50-yard line. 
ball came loose there. The officials making sure everything okay. 4.30 to play. Bears second down nine from the 49. Bell flares it out left side incomplete. Led uh, Trey Payne a little bit too much. He was uh, incomplete, overshot him. Ricky Thompson, it's third down and nine for the Bears. Well, he was, but Trent Shelton was running wide open with the post. The deep safety bit on the up receiver, and Shelton was about five yards behind everybody. I saw that. When that ball didn't come his direction, Trent Shelton just kind of hung his head. It is third down and nine for the Bears from their own 49-yard line. 4.25 to go. Bears trailing by three, 24-21. Two receivers left, two to the right side. Mosley in the backfield. Record crowd making a lot of noise. Snap back to Bells a little bit low. Picks it up. Pressure. Throws incomplete. Threw it at the feet of Trey Payne. John Bell got hit. Boy, it sure seemed late, but there's no flag. Had to unleash that pass quicker than he wanted to, and it went at the feet of Trey Payne. It was Alton Dixon coming on that blitz by uh, by Texas A&M, and Sean Bell is really hurting now after uh, a hit as he threw that pass in the direction of Trey Payne. Well, John, that was big press pressure by A&M. Baylor was, uh, had a motion man come from left to right and uh, really close to a, a late hit, but I think Sean fell hard, harder than what he was hit simply because his leg is hurt already, so he couldn't break his fall at all. And that's not looking good right now because he's really really being very gingerly. He's walking gingerly on that leg. Helped off by his teammates. Punting situation for the Bears. Good snap back to Sepulveda. Nice nose up spiral. Chad Schrader will let it bounce over his head at the five and into the end zone. 51 yard uh, punt by Daniel Sepulveda. Couldn't spot it inside the 20. On the touchback the Aggies will have the possession of the ball at their own 20 yard line. Situation is this. It's 4-14 remaining in the ball game. Texas A&M leads Baylor 24-21. We're back in a moment on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. America's best price leader, Varsity Ford, has 0% interest for 72 months. If you're paying more than 0%, come into Varsity Ford today. Get 0% for six years and a $1,000 rebate on every 2006 Ford Expedition. Get one today with seating for nine for only $315 per month. Take home America's muscle car, the 2007 Ford Mustang, for only $257 per month. Or drive away in an F-150 Super Crew for only $308 per month. Visit America's best price leader, Varsity Bypass, or online at varsityflm.com. Possession of the ball and a three-point lead. J.J. Baylor defense has to get a stop right here and get the offense the ball back. And then we'll find out if uh, Sean Bell is able to go back out there as a gamer at uh, quarterback or if we might see Blake Zemanski go in at quarterback. I'd be surprised to see Sean come back. All right, first and ten, Aggies from their own 20. First play, handoff to Javorski Lane. Dialing his number, and he's out to the 25-yard line. Bears get him down after a five-yard gain. It'll be second and five for the Aggies. Timeouts. Bears have two remaining. Aggies have two on their side should they need them. That was actually a gain to the 26, so six yards on first down. Leaves the Aggies second down and four. Well, this is the big down here. You can imagine what a wants to do at second and four. I'm looking for probably an option play or something where Stephen McGee has an option to, to keep the ball, but... They're going to try to milk this clock. Three minutes and 20 seconds to count. Nobody has left Floyd Casey Stadium early. Second down four. McGee, option to the left side. Changes direction, cuts up field. He gets almost to the 30. It's going to depend on the spot if he has a first down or not. If he doesn't have it, he is very close right at the 30-yard line. That was good defense. It's actually good defense by Baylor I mean, because the defensive end, Jeffrey Nelson, uh, really contained uh, Stephen McGee by not letting him get outside. He fought off the block of the tight end 
fought outside, so Steve McGee had to turn it back up, but uh, they had to push, and he had a little crease to run through. So uh, first down to 10. Now you have to start considering bringing a lot of pressure, trying to limit them, and using your timeouts with two minutes and 50 seconds. Block very much a factor. 250 and counting. Aggies do have a first down at their own 30-yard line. Two backs in the backfield, flanking quarterback Stephen McGee. Single receivers to either side. Handed off to Martellus Bennett off left tackle. I'm sorry, not Martellus Bennett, but Javorski Lane. <laughs> we uh, called his name so much. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that would be a story if Bennett was carrying it out of the backfield, but Javorski Lane gets just shy of the 35-yard line, so about five yards on that carry. Bears have uh, used one of their two remaining timeouts right here. Right now concerned about stopping the Aggies. Two minutes, 36, uh, two minutes 30 seconds on the clock. Second down and five for A&M from their own 35-yard line. Baylor just has one timeout remaining. Baylor trailing 24-21 to A&M. Here's the second down five play. McGee takes the snap. Fakes the handoff to Lane. McGee keeps and is hustled down to the ground at the 36-yard line. Bears going to use their final timeout right here. Bears need a stop trying to get the ball back, trailing 24-21 to the Aggies. McGee in the shotgun. Brings Riley in motion. McGee wraparound handoff to Goodson. Breaks outside of the left side of the 40 to the 50. He's going down the left sideline. Baylor's not going to catch him. That was amazing, I'll tell you. That was amazing. And that is something to break the camel's back because they had... Mike Goodson hemmed up on the little just hand. It was just a dive play. They had him hemmed up. He had nowhere to go, but he made the backside cut. He was started to his right, saw that the defensive end pinched down on probably what was a blitz, bounced out to the left side, and uh, that's all she wrote. But uh, uh, that was an excellent cut by the young man, the freshman, true freshman running back uh, for Texas A&M. Showed a lot of speed, too, as he got to the outside, down the left sideline for 64 yards. And the Aggie touchdown. Try for the extra point. Delayed momentarily. 2.15 on the clock. The Aggies hit the extra point. They're up by uh, 10 points, 31-21. Well, the officials are huddling, talking. I'm not sure what they might be talking about before this extra point kick. 2.15 on the clock. Our lead official, Randy Crystal, now will go to the far sideline and uh, report something to uh, Coach Dennis Franchione over there. 2.15 remaining. In the crowd tonight, outstanding. Thanks to everyone that is here. A 51,385. The new Floyd Casey Stadium record crowd here for this Baylor A&M matchup this evening. Six of the seven top crowds in this stadium's history have been Baylor and A&M. That does not surprise me. I, I bet you the other few will probably be in a Texas game uh, if it wasn't an A&M game. So uh, big, big play there. And uh, it's interesting to see what they're conferencing about over there with Coach Fran. And I know Coach Guy is saying, hey, well, what's going on? Yeah. All right, now uh, Randy Crystal will come all the way to the near side and uh, report something to head coach Guy Morris. Ricky, do you have any idea what they're talking about? No, I really don't. I'm trying to find out down here, but I can't tell. The coaches on this side have no idea at this point. I don't think it's a review in any way of that touchdown run. It's just something that uh, has delayed the extra point kick by Texas A&M. The discussion was about the clock. The clock remains 2 minutes, 15 seconds. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> a lot of discussion they're not changing <laughs> yeah, exactly and it stays at 215 now the extra point kick by texas a&m lane newman has missed one tonight and had a field goal block this one to put the aggies up by 10 with two minutes 15 seconds remaining snap back is down the kick is just barely good snap back a little bit behind the holder Schrader is the holder for the Aggies, but he pulled it around, and Newman knocked it through. And now with 2.15 to go, Bears down by 10, 31-21 to Texas A&M.
All right, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and you're right back in it. That's exactly right. But, I mean, with this offense, all you can do now, John, is try to score as quickly as you can uh, and try to get, uh, if you don't throw the ball beyond the sticks, you've got to throw it at the sideline to get out of bounds. Because all Baylor's concerned about now is getting some points, uh, whether it's three or seven, because then you're going to have to onside kick it anyway if you score. So you want to score as quickly as you can, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, and line up for an onside kick and then worry about that when the time comes. And when the Baylor offense takes the field, will it be Sean Bell, a hobbled Sean Bell, or uh, Blake Zemanski, who hasn't played since the second game of the year in the Northwestern State game, who will go out at quarterback for Baylor. Team Zemanski warming up on the sideline. A&M set to kick it off from left to right. Two minutes, 15 seconds to play. Aggies with a 64-yard touchdown scamper by the freshman Mike Goodson. Remains to be seen if that's the backbreaker this evening. Line drive kick is away. Kale Baker takes it at the 5, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Comes to the near side at the 25-yard line and back. Started off angling to the right side, came all the way back to the left and tackled there. So the Bears about 78, 80 yards away from pay dirt. They're going to need a couple of scores, though, down by 10 with 2 minutes, 2 seconds to play and no timeouts at their disposal. John, it does look like, and Ricky is just informed us that Blake Zemanski is going out, and that doesn't surprise me because Sean, is, his helmet was on the bench, and he's really hurting, uh, and he can't put any pressure on that leg, and he can't uh, throw the ball off his plant leg, so uh, it makes sense to let him sit out and see if Zemanski can put the ball down the field. Blake Zemanski under center, first play, flares it out right side. Ziegler wants to throw, going deep for Shelton. He's wide open. And It would have been an 80-yard touchdown. Ziegler threw a beautiful pass, and Trent Shelton could not hold on to it. Well, I think the backup quarterback on our team is Dominique Ziegler, to be honest with you. But that was a great play call by Lee Hayes, and Trent Shelton was running a post. And the only difference is, is uh, Dominique threw it as far as he could, where he actually had a chance to maybe underthrow him a little bit, and Trent still could have caught it. But Trent had a perfect opportunity at that ball and that would have been amazing to score that quickly and then line back up with an opportunity to do an onside kick. Brent Shelton gets a pat on the helmet and the head by uh, head coach Guy Morris as he comes to the sideline. Second down 10 now from the 23. Zemanski to throw. He is pressured. He's going to run it up the middle. He's to the 30. He weaves his way to the 35. Takes a hard hit at the 35 yard line but the red shirt freshman Blake Zemanski Sort of getting his feet wet by uh, keeping that ball and running up the middle. Good play by him. He got tapped, so he ran the ball, but he got the first down. That's the big thing, and, and a key thing for him is that he got that first hit. That's what a quarterback needs to kind of clear your head and get the play off and then another play. 12-yard gain, first and 10. Bears at the 35, 126 remaining. Zemanski to air it out again. He's going to run it again instead. 40 to the 43-yard line, Zemanski. The Bears have no timeouts remaining. 1.14 to go. They're going to go right to the line of scrimmage. No huddle for the Bears. Down by 10, 31-21, 107, 106, 105 to play. Blake Zemanski in for an injured Sean Bell late fourth quarter. Zemanski again, pressure rolling, throws it upfield, incomplete. Threw it in the vicinity of uh, Paul Mosley. 54 seconds to go, third down and three for the Bears from their own 42. Three receivers right, Zemanski throwing right side. This one is intercepted by Texas A&M. Ball is intercepted by Jordan Peterson. First turnover tonight comes in the final minute on a Blake Zemanski interception. Good fight, and I know if you're better, you hate to go down, especially not with all your guns blazing as Sean went out hurt. But uh, it was excellent, well-played game. Very few turnovers. None turnovers. That was the only turnover of the game. First one. Uh, and uh, both teams really fought hard. You hate to see anyone lose, but uh, that is a well-played game. Aggie's going to take a knee one time, and that should do it. Getting their victory position, whatever they call it. Stephen McGee takes the snap, takes a knee, and that'll do it. Well, a hard-fought, well-played game by both teams tonight. Don't you agree? And the Aggies get the backbreaker, a 64-yard touchdown run by Mike Goodson, the freshman, with a little over a minute to go, about two minutes to go 
And that is the difference as the Aggies win 31-21 over uh, Baylor tonight. The two head coaches do meet and uh, exchange handshakes at midfield. And the Aggies have the win. They're 8-1 on the season. They go to 4-1 and one in Big 12 play. The Bears to 4-5 and five now overall. They fall to 3-2 in the Big 12. Tough loss. I mean, it's a really tough loss. The kids were really geared up for this one. But, uh, you know, I mean, this game is going to come down to the last few plays. And uh, a &Ms and Mike, uh, Mr. Goodson made an excellent play, excellent cut, a race down the sidelines. And, 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 and that's what happens in games. Somebody's going to make the play. And they made the plays in the second half specifically that one that they needed to make to win the game. Well, the 60-point effort will be tough to take.